am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Good morning to you if you are worshiping online. If you are watching this on the live stream, you are just as much a part of the congregation as any of us who are gathered live. So we are glad that you are here. That song said, we are children of God. And that is what this day is all about. It's celebrating that we are all children of God. And we're really celebrating children today. So as we worship together, I invite you to stand, put your, put your hands together, and let's make this a time of true celebration worship. Come on, stand and sing with us. I will worship. I will worship. With all of my heart. With Seek you, I will seek you all of my days, all of my days, and I will follow, I will follow, follow all of your ways, all your ways. I will give you all my worship, I will give you all. You are 
Even if I ran away, your love never fails. I know I still make mistakes, but you have new mercies for me every day. Cause your love never fails. You stay. however you want to today. All are welcome. Every single person here, no matter what your story is, no matter why you've come, you're welcome. So I pray that you meet in some way and experience God today. You have connection cards. Don't fill those out yet. 
you have time. You're gonna turn those in at the end today. Hang on to those. If you're online, you can go to crossroadsnova.org slash here and you can fill that out. But just know that we're grateful to worship with you. I pray that you experience beautiful welcome, invitation today. Again, I'm glad that you're here. So as we sing this next song, as we sing Oceans, the words of this song talk about stepping out into unknown worlds and into unknown things. And I don't know about you, but I got three kids that are about to go back to school and sports are starting again. <laughs> and life just keeps moving. So as we step into this unknown world, let's sing this song together and know that you're not stepping out alone. Yeah. 
to somebody near you as you're being seated. So we have the gift. First of all, we have the gift of having children in our church. Isn't that amazing? Amen. It is a gift to have kids in our church, and we have the gift of some baptisms this morning. So I'm gonna invite both of your families to come up. You guys can stand on this side. You guys stand on this side. Um, it is an honor to be part of your family's lives, to be part of your kids' baptisms. And friends, as they're coming up, I wanna tell you a little something. There are people who wonder, why do we baptize children in the church? Shouldn't we wait until they can decide? In our tradition, we believe that baptism is a gift of God, that God is the one doing the action, that God washes over these children, and it's a symbol of what God is already doing, a symbol of God's grace as God washes over them. So what we do at this juncture in their lives is we ask your parents some questions on your behalf. So you guys don't have to answer these questions, but they get to answer these questions. So I ask you now, I get the opportunity to ask you on behalf of the whole church, in your everyday life, are you choosing to be a follower of Jesus? If so, say, I am. I am. By God's grace, will you strive to show and teach your child about compassion, about forgiveness, about service, justice, and the wisdom of Jesus? If so, say, I will. By God's grace and your personal practice, will you teach your child by example the importance of being connected to a church? If so, say, I will. And maybe even the most important one, by God's grace, will you practice offering your children God's blessings every day so that they will know that they are beloved children of God? If so, say, I will. So we're gonna do a little bit of practice of that right now. You're gonna read your blessing to your kids. She's great. She's fine. Shallow, you are great. You're great, so you can go first. Okay. Skylar, Annika, and Shiloh. I love you with all my heart, and being your mom has been my greatest blessing. As you celebrate your baptism, I pray that you always have faith in God, trust in your journey, and learn from your experiences, big and small. I pray that you give love and spread kindness to all people as Jesus taught us. I pray that you have confidence in yourself to be exactly who you are, you are meant to be as a beloved child of God. Always know that you have the love and support of me, our family, and our Crossroads family every step of the way. I love you, and I'm so proud of you. This one. Hayes, you were born into the craziness of 2020 you were the bright spot and the sunshine we all needed. God has given you a kind heart, sweet nature, and so many gifts that we hope you share with the world. Our prayer for you is that you'll always feel your family and God's love in your life. We all love you so much, Hayes. I can't help but note the irony for just a moment that the screen says the struggle is real right now. <laughs> That's the series that we're in. But if you've ever had children or no children, can you say amen to that phrase? Amen. All right. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God, over each of these kids and over this gift of water. Wash over them. Let them know of your grace and your love and your compassion. 
for each and every one of them. And might we continue to love them deeply. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, who's first? All right, Skylar. <laughs> oh, all right, is it your desire to have this child baptized in the Christian faith? Her given name? Skylar Rose. Skylar Rose. Skylar, you wanna step up a little bit? Skylar Rose. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <laughs> Is it your desire to have this child baptized in the Christian faith? Her given name? Annika Grace. Annika Grace. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Is it your desire to have this child baptized in the Christian faith? I do. Her given name? Shiloh Ivy. Shiloh Ivy. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can you do fist bump? Fist bump. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm gonna have you guys slide down a little bit. You guys come on over. Hi, buddy. Is it your desire to have this child baptized in the Christian faith? It is. His given name? Hayes William. Hayes William. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I'm gonna have you guys and you walk with me. Come with me. I'm gonna have you guys step just this way, just a smidgen. I want you to see these children. I want you to see their faces. And I do this every time we do this, and we've done this a lot lately. Because I want you to see the commitment that you're making to these beautiful kids. In just a moment, Jesse and Stefan are gonna ask us to, to join with them in these words, these words where we commit to care for these kids and to love them and to walk beside them. Because I've already asked their parents, will you help raise them in the church? And the reason for that is not so they get their marks and so they get their attendance. The reason for that is because I believe that as a church, we'll care for them and love them and journey with them and walk beside them. So later today, I'm gonna to talk about children and how we care for children and the importance of that. And when I do, I'm gonna talk about some real action steps you can take. Now friends, if we get to this end of the service and we've all made this commitment to these children and not one person takes an action step, then I have failed as your pastor. And I really mean that because I need you to see that these people are beautiful and important and valuable. So I want you to join with Jesse and Stefan who are amazing and who lead our baptism classes in the words that you'll find on the screen. With, with God's, God's help, help we, we will share, share the good news of Jesus, Jesus Christ and try, and try to live like Jesus. Jesus. We will, will surround these children with, with a welcoming community of love, of love and, and forgiveness, forgiveness that, that they, they may, may grow, grow in their unlimited, unlimited welcome, welcome to, others. to others. We will, we will pray, pray for them, them that they, they may live an abundant, abundant life, life surrounded by God's, God's grace. grace. All right, I want you guys to walk back up here with me and I'm gonna pray for you. Just come right back up here. And I invite the church, just lift your hands like this as I pray. Would you pray with me for these children? Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all four of these beautiful kids. God, for their lives, for those that love them, for their parents as they raise them, because God, truly, the struggle is real. As we care for one another, would you let them know each and every day that they are beloved and blessed? In Jesus' name, amen. Let's welcome them again. Thank you, guys. <laughs> It's not like it used to be when we were kids. The pressures, the expectations, the uncertainty. It seems like being young grows more difficult each year. And being a parent, 
comes with an ever-increasing level of anxiety. God, as a new school year begins, we ask for your hand to rest on the shoulders of our children. May your presence be palpable, your wisdom accessible, and your glory undeniable. We pray you would guard their hearts, guide their steps, and keep them safe. As they walk the halls, may their eyes be fixed on you. When they're overwhelmed, grant them peace. And when they're uncertain, grant them understanding. Thank you for entrusting us with your creation. Now, as they go back to school, we entrust them to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I wonder if you might pray with me and for me this morning. God, I pray that somehow the words that come out of my mouth might be honoring and pleasing to you. God, that you would give us ears to hear what you want us to hear, that our minds would be open to understanding, and that our hearts would be willing to be transformed. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, I think we have a reading that's happening from Mark chapter 10. All right, here we go. <laughs> Come on up. Keep coming. You're almost here. There you go, sir. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to, the, to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms placed his hands on them and blessed them. Mark 10, verses 13 through 16. This morning we're starting a new sermon series here at Crossroads and we do these every three or four weeks, maybe five weeks we start a new series because the idea is that our desire is to dive more deeply into a conversation and today we're starting a series we're calling The Struggle is Real. Now this is a hashtag people have been using for some time and they use it for things like uh, Starbucks season is out of pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> hashtag the struggle is real. Or I realized I wore two different shoes to work today, right? We've all done it, right? <laughs> hashtag the struggle is real. Navy blue and black are very similar, right? Hashtag the struggle is real. Or, and that sort of seemed to be sort of an upping the ante of the hashtag first world problems, right, that people used for so long. But in this series over the next three weeks, I wanna dive deeply into some real challenges, some real things, some, some people groups in our society where the struggle really is real. The challenges are real. So today I'm gonna talk about children and the next week I'm gonna talk about those who are incarcerated, and we're gonna dive more deeply into that, and then the next week I'll talk about those who are unhoused. And the goal of this series is first to raise awareness, but second, that we'll do something. That we won't be a church that simply says, all right, we'll pray for kids, we'll baptize them, and that'll be sweet and cute, but that we'll do something about it. That we won't be a church that says, it is really awful for people to be incarcerated and the challenges that go with that, but that we'll do something about it. So today I'm gonna to talk about caring for our children. And as I think back, and I'm really gonna date myself in age here, as I think back to places and times where I've watched shows with kids in them, education seems to always be at the center, right? Go back for some of us, I watched reruns, to Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> right? Little House on the Prairie, what happened in the schoolhouse? Church happened in the schoolhouse, right? It was church and school. They both happened in the same place. Or I think there's some sort of remix happening on Boy Meets World with Mr. Feeney, right? That happened around the school. High School Musical, the musical, happens in a school, right? All of Saved by the Bell, Bayside, in a school. All these things, education seems to be central 
to the life of a child? Can we start there? Can we agree on that? That education is central to the life of a child. And it's important that we get to that. Why does this matter? Well, it seems to me if you read, if you heard the scripture that was just read by Luke, thank you. If you heard the scripture that was just read, children matter to Jesus almost more than other people. I mean, Jesus speaks really specifically about children, about how we care for them, about what we do with children, about how we connect with them. Do not hinder them. Don't keep children from growing. Don't keep them from having all that they can have in their lives. You know, I have a friend who's a pastor right now, and they have some kids in their church. And this summer, they've been having kids in worship because he thinks, like I do, that it's really good to have kids in worship. And do you know he has people telling him that they're gonna stop coming to church because kids are in their worship? And I told him, you got a real easy answer for that. There are plenty of churches that have no kids. But Jesus is really clear about children, right? He's really clear that we're supposed to care for them and not harm them, not hinder them in any way. So if this is so important, education is so important, how are we doing with this? What are some of the things, I wanna talk about some of the challenges. I was recently talking to a principal of a school, and this principal and I were just having a random conversation, and I said, what is one thing that you think a church could do that would help kids in your school? And she said, it's a no-brainer. Number one, care for the teachers. The number one thing you could do right now, she said, is care for teachers. She said, in my entire career, it is the hardest time it has ever been to be an educator right now. And if we would stand up and we would care for teachers more, she said, it would change things because she said, when teachers are happy, they care more deeply for their kids. It seems trivial, right? It seems like a no-brainer. Yet any news that you read or anything you hear, you hear about the great teacher shortage, right? Friends, there's not a teacher shortage. There's a care for teachers shortage. And there's a place where we have found ourselves where teachers are being so beaten up and bruised that things are getting harder and harder for them. And listen, these are folks who love teaching. They love kids. I was just having a conversation with a teacher a couple of weeks ago who said, maybe I'll have to go sell insurance or something. Y'all sell insurance? That's hard. So care for our teachers, do things. The Virginia Education Association reports that there are thousands of unfilled teacher positions this year. Somebody told me this morning many of them are for kids with special needs. I want you to think about the struggle that is there for our teachers and our kids. And listen, I love my kids. My kids are 13 and 15, but you put 25 of my kid in a room, whoo, no thank you. It is hard. It is hard to do this work. Yet we are called to offer our teachers TLC. If you're a teacher of any sort, just stand up right now. Right where you are, stand up. Don't worry, we're gonna pray for y'all later. <laughs> Love our teachers. Care for them. The second greatest challenge when I was talking to this principal that she said happens in our system are those who are affected by challenges in education related to the fact that they are poor, that they fall below the poverty line. Studies show that preschool is a great way for education to transform kids' life. Do you know that? Preschool. That preschool changes kids' life. Deborah Phillips, who's a professor at Georgetown, she's been studying public school preschool programs for more than a decade. And these are her findings. And I want you to hear this because I think it's important. Children who attend Head Start, which is a preschool program provided by the county, had higher test scores on state math tests by eighth grade. Students who were in these programs, they were less likely to be retained, less likely to display chronic absenteeism. There are highly consequential results for not going to preschool. And do you know that adversely affects the poor? Because those of us who have funds to pay for preschool have beautiful options. 
She went on to study that low-income children who come out of Tulsa's CAP Head Start program, they defy teachers' and principals' expectations of them based on their background. Preschool changes a kid's life. So if this is so important, how are we doing in Virginia? Y'all, it ain't pretty. In Virginia, only 18% of four-year-olds are enrolled in state-funded pre-K programs. By comparison, 32% of all four-year-olds nationwide have access to state-funded pre-K. In Maryland, 36% have access, while D.C. leads the nation with 81%. We have one of the lowest percentages in the entire nation in Virginia for preschool provided by the county. Many cannot afford it. Now listen, we have a great preschool here at Crossroads, and we love it. Not everybody can afford that. But what we know is that preschool education changes the trajectory of a kid's life. So in this series, we're gonna find ourselves looking at different people groups, specifically those who are poor and who are oppressed in our society, in our culture, and we're gonna try to dive more deeply and say, so what do we do? How do we get in this gap and stand in the gap for our children? I wanna look at a text this morning that comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, verses one to four. It says, the Lord God's spirit is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release for the captives and liberation for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vindication for our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for Zion's mourners, to give them a crown in place of ashes, oil of joy in place of mourning, a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. They will be called oaks of righteousness planted by the Lord to glorify himself. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore formerly deserted places. They will renew ruined cities, places deserted in generations past. As the prophet Isaiah talks to the people in this passage, he's saying restoration and renewal is coming. He's giving them hope, right? They're struggling because times are hard and challenges are hard. Now you may say, hey Tim, there, there's a problem with this passage because this passage is not speaking specifically about education. It's not particularly talking about kids. In fact, in this context, it's talking to people who are in exile. You may read it and you say, hey, it's a little bit about prisoners, so maybe Tim's got the wrong passage for the wrong week. No, friends. This is the right passage for us to focus on. Because when we look at passages in Scripture, when we think about these things, we have to look for what is the context that we can understand them in today based on our current society and culture. And I want you to hear the context of this passage. This is about bringing freedom to people's lives. Jesus said that he came to bring freedom and bring life and life abundantly. I think this is one of the passages that he was referring to. It you, talks about the year of Jubilee where every 50 years they would let everybody free, free of their debts, free of being in prison. And we're called as people who call ourselves Christians to bring freedom to people, not to oppress people. Too much and too long the church has been part of the oppression instead of the freedom. And we're called to bring freedom to people. Would you agree that children are some of the most vulnerable people in our society? Can we, can, we, can we start there? That's why Jesus talks about them so much. That's why we're called to pay attention to them. One of the ways to bring freedom to kids is education. And Isaiah in this passage as he's talking to the people is saying, the time for this freedom is right now. Stop waiting, stop kicking the can down the, down the road, stop saying, well, that's somebody else's problem. Isaiah's calling for that liberation and that freedom now. I don't know about you guys, but I have found parenting over the last few years to be harder. Not because my kids are bad. I was just saying to somebody the other day, our kids are 13 and 15 now, and I think it's my favorite age they've been in yet. I really enjoy them. People kept telling us, when they become teenagers, they will be awful, right? I really enjoy them. But I'll tell you, my kids are in a world that I don't fully understand. They're engaging things that I don't fully know, and I think it gets harder and harder and harder. They missed critical years of being in community with other kids because of COVID, and it, it was good, and it was what we needed to do, and yet, it's still missing. 
And I think it is really hard to understand, maybe some of you guys feel the same way, how we navigate this. What does it look like when your kid, our, our son's a sophomore in high school, and the aspirations that you have for your child aren't necessarily falling into the same way that you thought they would? What if your kid is not the same kid that you were? Right, how do we navigate this and walk through this? I think this next part is really helpful. Verse three says, to provide for Zion's mourners, to give them a crown in place of ashes, oil of joy in place of mourning, a mantle of praise in place of discouragement. They will be called oaks of righteousness planted by the Lord to glorify himself. Now this is a lot of fancy language. What does it mean? It means that what God is offering here, what Isaiah is bringing is hope. Hope and calling for us to bring hope too. Calling for us to respond. I wonder what it would look like for us to bring oil of joy in a place of mourning right now. What does it look like for us as a church to respond in that way for a child? Might oil of joy be ways that we can help them advance? Might oil of joy be collecting school supplies and backpacks for kids so that when they show up the first day of school, they actually have the things that they need? Might oil of joy be making sure that kids have food? Because I just found out Loudoun County's not providing food for all kids this year. And what I know is that getting on that free lunch program is a lot of paperwork and it's really hard. So what does it mean to be oil of joy? Might oil of joy be replacing their mourning by making sure that kids have what they need, by making sure that teachers have the resources that they need? In one of the commentaries that I read about this passage, it said that the people are to be treated as and they are to become other than the humiliated, fragmented, dispirited, and exploitative people that they currently are. Is it time for us to look at our children like these two parents did today and say, you are a gift, you are loved, to offer blessing to them over and over again. Some time ago, it was an election season, and don't worry, I'm not gonna get political, but it was an election season and there was a bond referendum. And the bond referendum was about expanding funds for the schools so that they could build. I guess anytime they wanna build, you have to vote on that. And I was talking to this older couple in our community who didn't have kids in the school, and I said, so are you excited about the upcoming election? That's always a great question to ask these days, right? <laughs> and I said, are you excited about the upcoming election? And they said, the thing we're the most excited about is the school bond referendum. We're voting yes for that. And I said, why? Like, that means you're gonna pay more taxes for kids. You don't have kids. And they said, because when kids are educated, the entire society is better. When kids are cared for and they have the resources that they need, when walls aren't falling down in schools and ceiling tiles, and when they have air conditioning, the entire society is better. So if you're here today and you don't have kids, take my friend's words. When we care for our kids, the entire society is better, amen? When we do that work, it's just better. So what do we do? What kind of actions can we take? What are things that we can do? Here's the first thing, and this seems really simple, but we can make meal bags. We do that on school breaks, we do school break bundles, we can do that, we can provide food for the, for the food shelter that we do, we can do that work. I didn't, I didn't even know, I didn't even, David, I didn't even know you were gonna be here today. I'm gonna tell your story though. I didn't know he was gonna be here. He used to be a bus driver. And there was, there was a church that I was a part of that was providing meals for kids on the weekends. And he said that he noticed a difference in the kids walking on the bus on Monday mornings. Why? Because they had food. Food changes kids' lives, friends. Let's pay attention to those opportunities we have to provide meals. And you may say, man, don't we need to start catching people upstream? Yes, but until we do, let's make sure they have food. Is that not a basic thing that a child should have? Food. Here's the second thing. Mentor kids. Care for them. Pour into their lives. You can do that in lots of different ways. You can call your local elementary, middle, or high school and say, I'm open to it. I can almost guarantee you that they have a program. You can do it right here in our church. Two of our folks are gonna be out there, Graham and Drew, today at the tables. There's a card you have, a connection card. They're gonna be out there and they're gonna say, hey, 
We need people to pour into the lives of our children. You just committed to do this. I never wanna be a part of a church that just says stuff. We just committed to do this. Check the box, go out there and talk to them today. We have an opportunity, I'm gonna talk about it in more detail for ESL this year. I'm so excited that it's happening on Wednesday and Thursday nights. We need folks to work with our children when they're here. Do you know why our program is so wildly successful here at Crossroads? Because we offer childcare. Parents need childcare and you can pour into the life of kids. Mentor them, walk with them. Here's the third thing, help support the school. There's a movement that's been happening this year where teachers are putting their school supply lists out. Have you seen this? Like support a teacher, what's it called? Anybody know what it's called? Clear the list, clear the list right? Adopt a teacher, clear the list. For goodness sakes, go home today and clear somebody's list. School starts Monday or Thursday, depending on what county you're in. Hey, how many teachers would be excited if you didn't have to buy any school supplies yourself this year? <laughs> clear the list. Go and find it, do it. You saw, I don't know, 30 or 40 teachers in here today. Look at them again. Give them a high five, a fist bump, whatever they're comfortable with in the land of COVID, but care for them. Tell them how grateful you are for them. And for goodness sakes, if you're a parent, when the one little thing goes wrong in the beginning of the year, choose to believe that the teacher loves your kid. Support them and encourage them, walk with them. We did breakfast for the teachers at Trailside Middle School last year, and I wasn't here when it happened, and I'm really grateful that we have some folks in our church who could do that and provide that. But I was sitting at one of my daughter's softball games about a month later, and there were three, teach three folks sitting up front, and I couldn't figure out, because they weren't parents, and usually it's mostly parents, and I said, hey, how are you guys connected? Because, you know, I talk to everybody. And I said, how are you guys connected? And they said, oh, we all teach at Trailside. And I said, no way, I'm the pastor at Crossroads. We did breakfast with you. They were like, the breakfast was so good. And then they went on and on to talk about it. And what a gift it was. Y'all, it was breakfast. But could you imagine being in a career that has increasingly become more and more thankless when somebody provides Anita's breakfast burritos? Let us do that work. I don't know about you, but I want to be oil of gladness for a child. I want to replace mourning and sadness with joy. I want to help spread the year of Jubilee to people's lives. I want our society to be better because kids have felt loved and cared for and educated. And frankly, I don't want Jesus to be mad at me. Because I think when I don't care for kids, he is. There are very few things that I think are incredibly black and white, but when it comes to children, that's one of them. We are called to love them, not to harm them, not to hinder them but to care for them. So I want you right now, if you're in person, to take out your connection card. You probably have it. Take it out, put it in your hand. It's in the worship guide. I want you to fill it out first of all because we're gonna pray for every name that's on there. But I want you to think about three specific opportunities that are on there. One is about connecting and helping mentor our kids and students this year. And look, you're not checking this box saying, sign me up in blood, I'm committing to the rest of my life. You're checking this box saying, I'm open to this and I'm interested and I'm willing to, to try because kids matter enough. There'll be a table out in the gathering space, out in the hallway later on. You can go out and talk to Graham or to Drew. Second thing I want you to consider if you have a middle school or high school student is sending them to our kickoff on the 11th. It's a year kickoff party, it's gonna be great, it's at 6.30, if you wanna volunteer for that, we would love to have you, it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I find that students want to connect when they see other students, when they know that they're here, and that's really important. And the third thing I really want you to consider, I want you to consider volunteering for ESL to help out with childcare. Imagine the difference that you can make in a child's life on a Wednesday or a Thursday evening. You don't have to have experience. Just saying, look, I'll give a night a week. I'll pour into the life of a child because it matters. I'll pour into the life of a child because there may not be time for their parent to pour into their life in that moment because they're taking classes. You might have a high school student and say to that high school student, hey, this is a great way to get hours for volunteer service. 
But I want you to think about it as you do any of these things, as you check any of these boxes. How can I be oil of joy, joy for a child? How can I transform their lives? Because friends, the struggle is real. It is absolutely real. And it's absolutely hard to know how to navigate these times. So I think we have some preschoolers coming in and we have some students coming in and we have some kids here. So if you are in any form or fashion going to school this year, I wanna invite you to come up and stand up here. Don't be shy, come up, you can stand right up here. Come on, there's a couple of y'all. Come on up. Just stand right up front. Come right up front. Come on. You guys want to do it? Come on. Come around here. Hey, there you go. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. This may take a minute. There's a lot of us. Keep going. Keep going. Lots of us. Lots of us. Keep going. Squeeze in. You're doing great. You're doing great. Y'all don't have to be in a perfect line yet. You got a couple days got for that. More room over here, too. More room this way. Spread out this way. Come on back. Come on up, we have students coming in. Graham, I think that's your microphone. Will you just turn it off till we get started? Awesome, thank you. Come on in, guys. Students, come on in. You can go stand over there behind Drew. Drew, give him that space back there. Y'all, isn't it great to be a church with so many kids? Woo! All right, so here's what I wanna say to you. First of all, I want you all to know, kids, students, whether you're going to preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school, wherever you're headed, your church loves you. We are praying for you. We are excited for this year ahead. You may not be excited about school yet, but we are excited for you. And what I want you to know is that we want a couple of things from you this year. We want you to choose kindness. Because friends, the struggle is real. Life is hard for a lot of people. And what I would love is for somebody to come to you one day and say, hey, you're so nice. Why are you so kind? And then you could just blame it on me. You can say, my pastor at my church told me I had to be. <laughs> he told me I had to be kind and I had to be nice. But if that's the best thing that you get, the other thing I wanna tell you is Graham's gonna raise his hand and he's gonna wave his hand over there. Graham, Jill, Drew, all your volunteer leaders that help out, raise your hand and wave. These are people that wanna pour into your life, that care about you, when you need things that are here for you and to support you. So I'm gonna pray for you in just a moment, but I want Graham to tell you about what you're going to receive. He's gonna turn his mic on, and Graham, if you can come up just so they can see you. Cool. Hey, hey guys. So uh, as usual with our normal, you know, Back to school blessings. Sorry, my beard's on the mic. Uh, we're we're going to be giving you guys something to remember uh, Crossroads by throughout the year, and we're going to pray, pray for your school year. So uh, we're be, we'll be giving away these frog uh, backpack tags. We'll start over here with our younger kids and just kind of work our way out across. These frogs are to represent that we're... Awesome. So I'm gonna pray for you guys, and then as you're heading back, they can hand you these. Maybe we can put them on both sides, and as they're heading back, so let's pray for you. God, we thank you so much for these kids. We pray for their year. We pray that they are kind and loving. We pray that they welcome all people and show that unlimited welcome. We pray that they learn well, and that when days are hard, they know that their family loves them, they know that their church loves them, and that we are here for them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, don't move yet, kids. Teachers, stand back up again. Teachers, stand up where you are, stand up. Hey kids, I want you to clap really hard for these teachers, really hard. 
really hard. Now I want all you kids to give a thumbs up, give a thumbs up to the teachers, and we're gonna say a prayer for them. You ready? All right. God, we thank you so much for these teachers, for their lives, for how much they pour into kids, for the grace that they offer. We pray for extra energy, extra love, extra compassion, and we pray that every single one of their school supply lists get filled. Amen. Amen. All right. All right, kids, I'm gonna invite, unless you are in preschool, I'm gonna invite you to go back and sit with your parents. You can go back and sit with your parents where they are. If you're in preschool, I'm gonna invite you to sit right over there on the floor in front of that front row. Oh, I'm sorry, we've moved preschoolers over to this side. Preschoolers over here. All right, so that's the beauty of chaos, friends. It's happening. All right, you guys can go back and sit with your parents. All right, friends, if that felt moderately chaotic to you, you just experienced it for like a minute and a half. Teachers experience it all year. So you just got a little taste of what they are. We're gonna receive, I've got a little bit of a hum coming from this. We're gonna receive communion together today. Um, at that time, you can also bring all those filled out connection cards forward. I know you're gonna have them filled out. You can bring your generosity forward. Friends, the reason that we are able to do so many wonderful things for kids and students in this church is because of your generosity. So whether you're giving in person or online, I wanna say thank you as you bring those forward today. Communion, you'll be dismissed. The ushers will let you know when to come forward. When you come forward, you'll receive a little cup with juice and it'll have a wafer in the top. Receive that. You'll notice that there are these phrases on the walls. I wanna invite you, if you're in person, to do this after worship, to do a prayer walk, to read these statistics about children in our community and education, about those who are unhoused, and about incarceration. And I wanna invite you to really do the work of doing that. If you're online, that's also online on our website, crossroadsnova.org slash struggle dash is dash real. And you can find that. We want that experience to be there for you as well, to be able to pray through that. But we are gonna receive communion to end this time of worship today. All are welcome, this is God's table, not my table. If you'd like to receive, you're welcome to receive. If you're a parent who has a preschooler, we wanna invite you to pick up your preschooler as you come through, <laughs> please, <laughs> to receive communion with you, because I think that's a really beautiful thing. But all are welcome at the table, all are invited. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he was sitting around the table with the disciples, and he took bread, it was a common food, and he gave thanks to God, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to those disciples, and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat bread, remember me. When the supper was over, he poured into the cup. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks to God. And he gave it to the disciples, and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new promise poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, as often as you drink from the cup, remember me. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, on all of us that are here and on these gifts of bread and cup. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ as we become the body of Christ for the world, recognizing that we're redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in connection to all the world as we care for children, as we love them, as we don't hinder them and we become joy and oils of blessing for them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need gluten-free as an option, that will be available at each station as well. I invite the communion servers to come forward.
So as these last few people receive communion, I wanna remind you that Jesus cares deeply about children. And it's our call as a church to care about the things that Jesus cares about. Drew and Graham will be outside at those tables if you wanna talk to them. There's a bounce house. Come on, y'all. There's no age limit on that bounce house. There's popcorn. The biggest thing, go and be the church. Amen?